and continuing a bit of this fire theme that we seem to have here in the beginning of, of this uh, session. Uh, I am I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Helsinki and I am researching the <laughs> research history of Stone Age archaeology in Finland. And uh, this the topic of this presentation is related to research questions that I've been trying to find out ways to uh, trace any Stone Age artifacts that might have been in this uh, collection during the 18th century, when, of course, they didn't understand. Well, <laughs> there was a lot of discussion about the Stone Age artifacts, what they are, and so on. And this presentation came from those questions, but then I added some other, other stuff also to that. And I have worked at the coin cabinet of the National Museum of Finland, where the remains of this collection are kept, like these coins, for example. So I, I got interested in. Okay, sorry. I thought I did that, but it just. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And now to find out how do I get to the next slide. Oh. Uh, just a, I just saw a map quickly so that we know where we are, like where these things are happening. So the city of Turku is or, uh, at the western coast of Finland. And it was the main city in Finland during the Swedish reign. Helsinki has only been the capital uh, since the beginning of 19th century. And then uh, straight to the action. This uh, great city fire of Turku started at 9 o'clock in the evening on the 4th of September in 1827, so it was almost exactly 192 years ago today when I'm speaking about that. And about almost 75% of, of the city was destroyed and uh, still only, only a few persons lost their lives, so it was uh, already in contemporary sources. Uh, considered as primarily as a material and cultural catastrophe. And newspapers also abroad uh, emphasized the cultural losses. For example, the London Standard uh, mentions the loss, mentioned the loss of the buildings of the academy with valuable collections, the library of 40,000 volumes, the cabinet of medals, the collections of instruments. Uh, and in this presentation, I'm trying to shed some light on these collections which were mostly, but not entirely, destroyed in this fire. And I'm trying to examine some possibilities of reconstructing the collections uh, on the basis of the prevailing textual sources. Mm. The current University of Helsinki, my home university, is a new version of an older establishment. Originally, the university was founded in Turku, and it was founded in 1640 during the reign of uh, Queen Christina of Sweden. And the collections of the academy began already uh, in the 1650s as an art collection with portraits of the chancellors and professors of the academy. Uh, but the real collecting started in the 18th century. Numismatic collections were common at the time in universities and usually they were kept in libraries since medals depicting historical events and persons and ancient coins were seen as uh, illustrations to history and literature. Coins were also one of the first types of artifacts obtained as archaeological finds and also recognized as antiquities. Numismatic interest was an important factor in the development of, of archaeology as a discipline. Uh, but not many coins found as archaeological finds did end up in the academic collection because in the Swedish uh, realm, the treatment and possession of coins and other objects of precious metals found from the ground was governed by law already from the medieval time onwards, so that they were jointly, they jointly belonged to the king and, and to the finder. So uh, during the time of the Swedish rule, all antiquities found in Finland were sent to Stockholm's antiquity archive, so they didn't end up in this collection, but some did. And sometimes the finds were not claimed, but they were returned to the finder because they were like too ugly or something. <laughs> For example, a Viking Age coin hoard uh, was found in Finland in 1786, and it was delivered to Stockholm. Well, actually, actually it was delivered direct to, to King Gustavus III when he was visiting Finland. But uh, then it was later, two worn out coins were later returned to the finder. Um, 
the first real like object or batch of objects in this collection was uh, Viking Age Arabic coins um, collection that was donated in 1749 to the Academy. And they were from an archaeological find originally, but there was there is no context known today like where they were found. The problem with the fire was that it destroyed most of the objects, but it destroyed also all the catalogues that had, that had been used to catalog this collection. So the context and stuff like that is lost. And there are also some objects like this um, a Roman silver coin uh, here in the picture issued for Sabina, the consort of Emperor Hadrian, which was found in Finland during the early 18th century. And uh, since most Roman coins found in Finland are secondary finds, this was probably our primary find and very intriguing. And it is mentioned in 18th century texts, and there is one uh, dissertation published in the Academy of Turku, which has this picture of it, but the coin itself is lost. But <laughs> we can see uh, in, in this book picture, and then we can see how it was, the coin. There are mentions of, uh, in the sources that I have looked of old coins or rare coins or something like that donated, but there is never the, there is never the find context, so. Uh, mostly it was, this numismatic collection was mostly con uh, comprised of medals and then ancient Greek and Roman coins. But some very rare archaeological finds did end up there through donations, like this Iron Age golden bracteate found in Gotland, uh, which was in the fire and uh, survived it and looks like almost intact. It's still in the collections of the National Museum of Finland. Mm, there were also other Coin, other collections besides the coin and medal collection. Um, the mineral cabinet and the natural historical cabinet were also established during the 18th century. And the ethnographic cabinet was only started in 1827, so right before the fire. Uh, it mostly included uh, objects donated by an officer of the Russian Imperial Navy, uh, Adolf Etolen, who had acquired the items from Northern America and the Aleutic Islands. And he sent items in several batches, so some of them only came in after the fire, when the university had been relocated to Helsinki. And these, uh, all, all these are still like existing, and they are in the National Museum of Finland. But we can, we can just look at these pictures, and then we can think of the other <laughs> objects that <laughs> probably were in the earlier uh, donations and were then burned up. There was also uh, two pieces of wood and Egyptian mummy case that was donated to the academy and it's mentioned in textual sources, but no pictures or anything have survived of how it looked. Uh, and then for the most interesting thing for me in these stone artifacts, there was a lot of interest uh, during the 18th century aimed at surveying the geological phenomena found in Finland and collecting mineral samples and most certainly, it also led to some Stone Age uh, artifacts ending up in the collections of the mineral cabinet, probably, as natural curiosities. Or There are dissertations and other texts depicting uh, mm, prehistoric structures and stone artifacts. For example, this book, which covers here in the picture, there are, uh, it, it mentions Stone Age stone artifacts and has this, uh, like, discussion cited from different sources that what people have, what people think that they are, that some, some people say that they are natural curiosities formed during thunderstorms and some, some say they are, how was it, ancient battle hammers offered as sacrifice to Thor or something like that. So, um, <coughs> So it's, it's likely that they were in the mineral cabinet if there were any, any of these objects there. There were also some, some collections like uh, in 1770 there was a collection donated by a clergyman who had collected antiquities from his parish and we know that they were not coins so they were something else. But there are no catalogues or anything surviving about that collection. Um, and then just... Do I still have time? Yes, yeah. some. <laughs> okay. Uh, about the. Okay. <laughs> okay. The buildings of the of the academy where the where the collections were kept. These can be reconstructed 
uh, like more more easily than than the objects. They were originally kept in the old library building of the academy, which was situated in front of Turku Cathedral, and nowadays the site is under the monumental staircase of the cathedral. Uh, but then this new academy house, which is still standing <laughs> in Turku, uh, was built and all the collections were moved there, and they had their own uh, quarters there. For example, the numismatic collection was kept in the upper floor, and, and the ethnographic collections and natural historical collections were kept in the middle floor. And we even know that there was pink cotton wool that was used as a light lining in the drawers where the objects were displayed and so on. But um, during the fire, the floors of the academy building collapsed and the copper holding collections and everything, most of the collections itself were destroyed. And immediately after the fire, there were some people uh, led by student Himbari who searched the ruins of the academy building for objects of this collection that were that, that maybe there were some left and so on. And several items of the coin and medal collection were retrieved, like almost two-thirds of the whole collection. And together with the coins and medals, also some more than hinges of the coppers were collected, and they are still in the coin cabinet of, uh, of the Na National Museum, those black lumps in that picture. And the destruction of the library was pretty thorough, except for the coin and medal collection. All the other collections that were made of other substances than metal were burned. But what about the antiquity collection of this clergyman or the mineral cabinet? If there were any stone artifacts in the collection, they would have survived the fire. But the searching party uh, was only looking for the re remnants of the coin cabinet. So probably they just took everything metallic they saw, and they didn't bother if they saw some stones there. Um, could then some remains of the collection still be underground, left uh, buried under the academy building or something? Well, no, turned out that no, because the ground was leveled and after the fire and any extra soil was carted off somewhere around the city or countryside, so no. So this is a like lost collection and it can only be studied through textual sources, including the minutes of, minutes of the consistory of the academy and the few catalogues that were somewhere else during this catastrophe and correspondence of people and then the uh, doctoral <coughs> dissertations that mention objects from the uh, collection. And the academy building was later restored, has been the seat of Court of Appeal of Turku since 1830. So the buildings we can like look and think that this, this was the seat of the first museum collection in Finland. But the old library house, uh, there are no, no blueprints or pictures surviving of that, so we can really reconstruct it. Um, so I conclude that I found out that the, <laughs> during this presentation that the collection of the Academy of Turku was not really the first archaeological collection, but it was the first museum collection in Finland, uh, because it was not deliberately archaeological. There, were, there was not a de deliberate collecting or gathering done to gather objects found from the ground, uh, mostly due to the legislation that they, were, uh, they had to be sent to Stockholm. But there were several objects that were originally archaeological items, so therefore it's a little bit archaeological collection. But most certainly the first museum collection in Finland, and uh, maybe, maybe it should be more acknowledged as such, and more research should be done about these things. Thank you.